and just like that, we have got five brand new Incarnate Genesis weapons, which are also going to be added to the Daviri Paradox Circuit Rotation on Steel Path. Now, these ones are going to be here on week eight, which means, yes, that's about 40 Incarnate Genesis weapons to go ahead and get right now, which is a mouthful. So if you do not want to be burning yourself out, you can go ahead and visit Cavalero uh, at the Zaraman 10, and you can go and pick yourself uh, any of these weapons up just for a price of 120 plat. Now, I know it's not and everyone's made of money, but I'm not going to lie to you. Farming steel path circuits every single week for a total of almost like five and a half to six months will go ahead and warrant burnout. Okay, so please go ahead and consider this option if you want to go and avoid yourself burning out. And let's go ahead and bring himself onto the screen because we got a lot to go and cover. So uh, let's go ahead and break down everything you need to know about all of these five new incarnate weapons. And uh, there will be timestamps underneath. Okay, I'll make sure that I will show you guys um the transformation the evolutions uh, a build and a little bit of gameplay inside still past that you guys can just see roughly how well the builds hold up all right all sound good excellent so without further ado let's yap in clock get straight into it so let's go and start off with the cybers now i will go and say just a quick rule of thumb if you never know what to go ahead and infuse the incarnate genesis into primes okay just just rule of thumb it just it simplifies it there is some min maxim with a couple of other ones but overall tldr just put it in primes okay so uh, right now we put it inside the cybers prime let's go ahead and show you what the cybers prime now does so the cybers is a two burst ar rifle that you can go and see here now as per usual it's headshots go ahead and build it up let's go and get this built up <laughs> we do all of this stuff live i don't have a build on this right now and then when it is uh, ready to ahead of be transformed uh, you're gonna go and use your alt fire and it evolves into a four round burst with blast procs as you can go and see there do, 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 like that so uh, this is actually really good because as you can see it adds this big amount of stagger as well because there's just guaranteed blast procs going on um, and the damage is really, really good when you do go ahead and actually put a build in this bad boy. But just going to show you what that does and how that works. Let's go towards the evolutions of Cybris. So, evolution one, you can't pick. Now, I'm just going to kind of skip over these just so you get a rough idea. So, evolution two, you've got a choice between basically more base more base damage built up on headshots or more multi-shot uh, i'm not gonna lie to you i think both of them are fine but multi-shot for me was a bit more of a no-brainer because again it's just on firing i get more multi-shots so i was like okay sure why not i'll take it um now on this one evolution three uh, we have got the choice between increased base magazine capacity uh on reload from empty 60 reload speeds and weapon recoil um i will always say i have a rule of thumb here as well that anything that i go ahead and use on an incarnate weapon the odds are i'm trying to play for its incarnate form which means if an evolution cannot carry over into the incarnate form i don't take that evolution for example, here, the magazine capacity, it does not increase the magazine capacity on the amount of charges you get in the incarnate form. Now, whether or not that's subject to change in the future, no idea. But as of right now, that's not how it works. So uh, we don't take this option. From there onwards, then this is good, but it's reload speed. So reload speed is good. It normally helps you trans uh, evolve the weapon a little bit quicker. But this requires you to be empty, so I don't care for that. Uh, and then I've just got this one, which is weapon recoil, which, again, if I'm going to be doing headshots before the evolution and after the evolution it's kind of a no-brainer and then finally over here we got things like increased base status chance by five percent then the effect doubles in incarnate form which should actually going to just be ten percent as we can go and read of that keep this in mind because we're gonna keep it in mind on a full burst hit you get 20 20 percent damage resets on reloads now that's actually not too bad um as well and then over this one we got increased critical and status and these are just overall base increases now something that you will go ahead and notice is is that this one says critical chance by five percent which is fine but in status chance by ten percent seems a little bit weird because this is also basically ten percent when it's evolved so it doesn't and then this one, when not evolved, this one would yield more than this one. So I don't know what's going on here. Maybe someone else can go and clear it up. Maybe it's a bug. I'm not too sure. But just in case you think you're going crazy as well, you're not. Don't worry. I don't quite understand what's going on there. Anyways, I like to go and take the uh, percentile increases. So you can see there, 35, 35. It's looking pretty good. Now, as for a build, because we've done the evolutions now and we know what the weapon now looks like. As for a build, I'm now going to be using it for quite a lot of headshots. Okay. So uh, this is going to be the weapon here. And this is what I'm now going to go for. So I have quite 
quite a fair bit of scaling that we go and break it down um if you don't have these mods i can try and give you some substitutions so galvanized aptitudes this is basically because there's already quite a lot of elements going in here it's got ips it's going to be quite easy to go and proc those when the status chance is quite high so uh, i'm basically going to be guaranteeing like amplifying my elements over time as well and keep in mind there's other players there's other companions there's other things doing other sources of status so uh, it's going to be quite easy to proc and uh, it allows you for scaled up damage okay now if you don't have this you can just go and use a simple serration mod just go and pop it in there and go and get more damage cool up next we've got multi-shot now again this is just you get more multi-shot after a couple of kills but if you don't have this mod you can go and just use the normal uh split chamber mod wherever that one is uh, i don't know but anyways you can go use the normal split chamber mods you can pop it in there you're good to go and then i've also got the galvanized scope but because i'm going to be going for quite a headshot builds here uh, i do really want to go ahead and just steer in towards all of those lovely looking numbers um so uh, i've gone for the galvanized scope now if you don't want to go and run this you don't have to go and run this um there is an argon scope mod which is a lesser version of the galvanized if you don't have any of these galvanized ones there's always substitutions so there is argon scope but uh, if you don't have argon scope uh, honestly a faction mod works out well uh, more critical damage like a hammer shot would also work out well as well you can go ahead and get this mod in here if you wanted to it gives you critical damage and status chance i mean win-win it's going to be helping you've got guaranteed uh, you basically got guaranteed crit on every single shot so uh more critical damage is going to be good uh you get the idea there's a few different alternatives that you can put in there now i would go and put some utility in there and again since i'm kind of going for a, a bit of a um headshot kind of builds any kind of punch through where i can go and hit like two enemies in a row or three enemies or whatever uh, is also nice but do keep in mind with the blast procs there's going to be quite a fair bit of stagger so although it's nice to go ahead and go for headshots here just keep in mind enemies might be staggering a bit so if, if you don't mind your aim uh it's not a flex if you don't mind your aim then you're good to go if you do mind your aim and you're like oh i'm not really digging that then probably just go for more like a body body uh, shot and then just kind of like dig into them and go for like aoe clearing and so forth uh the other thing that we do go and have is just criticals in here just standards if you don't have critical delay just go and use point strike it's completely fine it's 150 percent chance over here but you know point strike that'll do you uh, and then just a critical damage lovely and then some elementals also works pretty well i've gone for viral mostly because i'm taking the uh, damage bonus on viral against the uh Oricon okay because uh, you'll see like during these clips and whatnot uh, you'll see me test them against the oricum so that's basically about that as for the arcane um honestly again it's a headshot so dead head makes sense to me now there are some other things that you can go and do in here uh merciless also just works whenever you're just killing just overall kills you build it up i'm not really a big fan of merciless though the other two that you can go and do which i see some other people doing is primary blight you can go not for a viral build here but if you go for a different build let's say you go for like uh i don't know a uh, blast and toxin um, where you take heat, cold, and then the toxin mods. Um, you can go ahead and get primary blight, which then gives you more critical damage and more multi shot. Honestly, it will work really, really well. There's no harm in that. I just tend to prefer the viral setup for myself, but that's just my two cents. And then if you don't want to go for that one, you can also go for frostbite as well. Now, do remember this because you can do this kind of setup of majority of ARs. So once I've taught this here, expect the kind of same process going forwards. So uh, same goes with frostbite as well. You can end it on a cold. So you could do like corrosive, which is electric plus toxin, and then have a cold at the end, and then go ahead and ramp that up, which also cold synergizes very well with uh, if you do go and get the status of cold as well, which also increases your overall well it will end up increasing your critical uh, damage towards the uh, enemy so that's basically about it that's basically about the builds uh, overall i'll try and put a little bit of uh, gameplay up on the screen sorry there won't be a lot of gameplay uh, mostly i just want to go and show you guys like how the weapon kind of works and you can see roughly what kind of damage it's doing as you can also tell i won't be changing the build so what you see here is what you get uh, but yeah overall cybris uh, cybris and Carden looking pretty nice i'm not gonna lie to you that four round burst with guaranteed blast procs definitely turns it from just that single target weapon into a bit of an aoe horde kind of clearer ad clearer which is also just genuinely quite nice so massive thumbs up if you if you was to ask me what weapon would i recommend i don't see any reason why i wouldn't recommend cybris i think it's very good okay so anyways let's go and bring myself back yeah what i do we're back here and let's go and look at the next one, which is going to be Dera Vandal. Uh, so I'm just going to go check my notes real quickly here. Uh, this is an energy assault rifle. Um, so keep that in mind going forwards. And again, as per usual, we don't have a build going on here. So however long it takes to go ahead and build up is however long it goes and takes. Let's say, you know, I'm doing all this stuff live. Oh, it actually wasn't too bad. So it's an energy AR, as you can see there. When you get the headshots, you can evolve the weapon. Boom. And now if I shoot, it's like a big big old laser as you can go and see there 
again unmodded all kind of base damage what's happening here is when you do evolve it you will be getting uh magnetic procs um you'll get increased damage increased crit chance increased crit damage but you lose status chance and fire rate okay that's basically what's happening there so it turns it into a bit more of like a pew pew pea shooter into more of like a heavy hard hitting laser it's not that bad for what it's worth you know anyways let's go ahead and have a little look at the incarnate uh, evolutions that we got here so again evolution one you know you need that to go and evolve the weapon evolution two we have got the difference between ammo efficiency or fire rate that's entirely up to you i won't lie to you this is status effect so on status effects you get fire rate it's kind of a no-brainer for me like i kind of i'm going to be going status all over this thing anyways uh, and also just going to quickly announce i put this on the dera vandal over the dera okay so this is currently on dera vandal uh, and then there's ammo efficiency over here but again like i said if i can't carry it over to the incarnate form i personally don't care for it so that means a lot to me so for now uh, i'm going to go and work with this one now, uh, as for the other ones, we got projectile speeds, we got uh, base magazine capacity, and we got, again, uh, magazine reloaded whilst holstered. Again, doesn't affect the charges. This is going to be, uh, again, not affecting the charges. And then this one is just projectile speeds. It's a it's a projectile without the incarnate evolution. It's a projectile with the incarnate evolution from what I'm aware of and from what I've tested. Either that or damage just shoots really quick. <laughs> so um, that's also just fine. Just whack it in there. Uh, if not, then honestly, I think this one would also be fine. Just go and help you get your charges a little bit bit more so having more magazine isn't going to be too bad this one it'll be a bit niche when you do go and use it it's more for like speed running purposes or more loadout purposes or something else like that and then we got the final evolution so we got the increase the critical chance and critical damage honestly that's just great 40 percent crit chance uh 40 uh, percent critical damage um nothing wrong with that so if you want to go and turn it into more of a critical weapon you can uh, then we got the uh, base critical chance by 25 percent of current status chance up to 35 percent now we'll go and say this just nice and clear if you're like me that doesn't make sense because the way that my brain works just doesn't understand how that's phrased so i'm gonna help you just real quickly if you want to understand how that works take the bottom number as the main number take the top number as a decimal and hopefully you'll see some math here and then take the take the bottom number and then divide it by the decimal top number which will show you how much that you need in this case status chance so it'll be 140 percent in order to then go and get the most out of your critical chance so that's what you're kind of looking towards as well okay so you really want to bump your status up there to try and go ahead and then increase your critical on top of it um that was an easier way that was introduced to me and again i don't know how to explain it very well just my brain doesn't click with it the more that i read that the less sense that it makes to me it's just it's just how i work and then over here the uh, increased base status chance by 14 percent. and again um you can just go and whack that up if you want to so i like a little bit of hybrid values here there's nothing overly wrong with that if i can go and get the increase i will take the increase um if not then just take this because uh you're going to be going for quite a status kind of setup anyways so let's go and have a little look at the weapon we have now got a status setup here uh oh i don't even actually exceed the 140 do i have anything scaling in here no i don't so i don't actually see the 140 is going to get the most return but i still get increased critical chance regardless i just don't get the most out of the critical chance um so we can go get some more status if you have the ribbon for example and you could roll it for status chance not too bad but as you can see kind of similar to the cybers i'll spend less and less time on each build if i've already explained like a build previously because the mods are relatively the same so again we got our scaling but this one is definitely more important if you do have serration sure you can put it in there but honestly scaling status damage in this case or damage scaling from statuses um is way better so we're going for a status setup here okay so galvanized aptitudes galvanized chamber scaling off you go again just go and use uh, split chamber if you don't have the uh if you don't have the galvanized chamber you can get these mods from arbitrations as well by the way in case you're wondering where to get them now again i like to go and use a faction mod here but it's because there's not a tremendous amount of other things for me to go and use could really consider the shred as well if you wanted to because once again you got a hard hit and laser and if you want to go and hit multiple targets with it and also go and get a little bit more punch through on top of it there's no harm in just basically taking that and as you can see there like really really giving it some oomph 171 there 660 there as well really giving it that big oomph on top of it do also keep in mind you also get the magnetic on there so galvanize if it does go and proc anything in here but keep in mind it's low low fire rate but this will help it um 
it is also just going to help overall increase the damage but it's entirely up to you uh let's go and take this out for now we'll go and leave that in and uh, we'll see how that goes and then finally we just got some criticals because again why not we're going to go for a little bit more of a harder hit with the beam and then we got some viral in here also oh, i got some viral in here and then i ended it with a bit of heat just because i'm mostly looking to go and bump up the status chance uh, a bit further as well uh, other status things again you could go and use hammer shot if you wanted to um there's not really many other ones to go and use this but it's mostly just hammer shot uh, but yeah it's entirely up to you but mostly hybrid leaning status first Follow critical behind it for the beam and again arcanes are entirely up to you i have just explained these with the cybers as well so hopefully at this point you've been following the video uh, and you get a rough idea but just a quick rundown if you do skip to any of these points deadhead merciless is also fine where's merciless deadhead merciless blight and frostbite is whether or not you want to end up synergizing with something a little bit differently but those are normally the ones that i would go for okay so again let's go put a little bit of gameplay up on the screen here now the derivandal uh, i'm gonna be honest about it i don't feel Think that it's bad and for what it's worth every incarnate genesis that comes out is basically a big improvement towards the weapon all right um so even if you're going to just take increased base base uh, passives from like critical chance or status chance overall the weapon is getting better regardless but i won't lie to you the derivandal to me falls a little bit short it's not really something that i personally enjoy it's not to say that i don't recommend it if you do like the look of it please go ahead and use it but um yeah just i don't know i find it a little bit slow in terms of killing here um but yeah it's all right i prefer i prefer some of these other ones so take it if you want to now let's bring me back hello again yes <laughs> so we're going to move on to the secondaries i'm going to start off with the sycorus uh, in Karnan as well so i've got i popped it on the sycorus prime over the sycorus just going to start off with and then let's go ahead and shoot this weapon and show you what it does and how it works so the sycorus is a three round burst as you can go and see there and then we're going to go get a couple of headshots go ahead and evolve the weapon now when it does evolve it's still a three round burst but it's got ricochet bullets so if you watch i'm going to shoot this guy here and then hopefully you'll see a bullet hit someone else see like that that took a bullet that took a bullet see the damage numbers there and there if i zoom out a little bit more and i go for a headshot here see that there so you, it doesn't have to be a headshot it can also be a body shot it can be a foot shot but you see how these guys are taking numbers as well so basically you get a ricochet now don't get me wrong that ricochet is actually really really nice it's kind of like the dual tox assist and we all know how good that works um so let's go and talk about the evolutions real quickly and just before i dive into this i will go and say currently right now this week on release unless it's been patched already forgive me i don't know what time this video is going to come out um it's currently bugged and it's doing way more damage than intended. It's way more. I can hit 500 million with this weapon alone. It's not supposed to be doing that. It's supposed to hit hard, but not 500 million? I've got stat sticks on pseudo exalted abilities that don't hit that hard. Looking at you, Atlas. Okay, right. Anyways, so. Uh <laughs> excuse me right so here's our uh, evolutions number one you know what to go and do so number two over here we got uh, uh again they're both just increasing base damage this one here is 40 percent damage to enemies below half health it's a little bit of like an increased execute if you will just trying to go ahead and finish them off and then this one here is you actually get no critical chance on body shots but if you do aim for headshots you get 150 percent critical chance and i'm not gonna lie to you i do enjoy those headshot builds so if i can i will go for this but i will also go and say certain factions are easier to hit than other factions when it comes to headshots i'm fully aware of this and certain units are also easier to hit headshots on um but again for now i like this if i do need to go and flex it i can always go and switch back to that whenever i want to so then evolution three, we've got accuracy and weapon recoil. We've got reload speeds and we've got base magazine. So again, I'm not going to be carrying that over. This one here is the reload speed. It actually just helps evolve the weapon a little bit quicker. I don't think I really care for that me personally, because again, I'm going to try and go for those headshots. I got a bit of headshot here. So I really want that extra accuracy and less weapon recoil. Really going to steer into just making sure I get those charges and I get that damage. Okay. You might see where my build's going in a second. <laughs> and then we finally, we've got evolution four. You can go and see that we got the, uh, uh, base critical chance which is just fine we got critical chance and status chance which again is fine and you can hybrid it or you've got increased status chance by 30 percent of current critical chance up to 40 percent remember take the bottom number then go ahead and take the top number as a decimal then you can go and see roughly how much you need i think it's about 133 percent critical chance is what you need to go and get more out of the status chance so it gives you a rough idea what you're working with but yes ideally i'm going to go for a bit of a critical headshot build so it's no surprise that when i go and pop this up on the screen you're like ah do you know what that looks very very similar to your cybers yes it does yes it, it pretty much pretty much is 
<laughs> okay, so Sigrid's to me was still a single target weapon, but with that ricochet, it's definitely going to help it kind of spread out and clear a little, uh, a couple more adds. So we'll start off with again the scaling mods. If you have these, pop them in. If you don't have them, just pop in the base versions. If you don't have this, you can go and pop in Hornet Strike. That can go in there. There's some damage. If you don't have Galvanized Diffusion, you can go and use Barrel Diffusion, which is your critical, uh, sorry, your multi shot as well. You're going to put that in there. Now, Lethal Torrent. It's just overall just a really, really good mod that I think is basically on every secondary weapon ever since the dawn of time. <laughs> and then we got some galvanized crosshairs as well. Again, if you don't have those, um, you can always go and use the hydraulic crosshairs if you want to. Uh, but for the most part, again, if you're still not after that, you want to go for other things. Again, honestly, it's just one mod out of eight right now. Put in whatever you want to. Faction mods, elemental mods, um, critical chance mods, critical damage mods. Well, critical chance, not so much because we're kind of getting a lot of critical from what we're doing with in the passives and so forth so just keep that in mind all right <clears throat> so over here critical damage critical damage because i'm getting critical chance i'm going for the headshots i'm going to try and get two forms of damage here um so sharpen bullets i don't really typically over like it overly like it but i am aiming quite a lot when i'm doing this because i'm going for headshots so it kind of synergizes what i'm doing it's increased critical damage whilst aiming for nine seconds as well so i kind of chuck it in there if you don't have this again feel free to play wherever you want to just more damage or elements or anything else like that if you really want to so then we got the critical damage i don't need to explain that and then we also got a little bit of viral in here as well again i'm mostly playing against the oricon so it's normally my default to sit on this but i can always swap accordingly just depends on what i want to now i do actually have that slot normally formed on majority of my pistols so that it can end in primed heat charge and the reason for that is because of the arcanes so if i do go and talk about this yes i have the dead heads but i won't lie to you cascadia flare which is a zaraman arcane that you can go and get from um is it quinn or Cavaliero, I think it's Cavaliero. Um, Cascadia Flare. It says on heat status effect, you go and get 12% damage for 10 seconds, stacks up to 400. 480% damage is a lot of damage. And he is generally quite easy to proc. And he is a standalone element, is fantastic. So if you end majority of your builds just with a heat mod, you're looking pretty crispy. It does damage, it can do damage over time. It, it does minor crowd control because enemies flay their arms up. Um, and it also does a, a, a bit of armor strip on top of it. So overall, it's a fantastic element to end on. So if you want to do Cascadia Flare here, you can do. Then, like I said, if you don't have that, you can go and use this and then go and do Viral Heat. See what I'm saying? Then change this if you want to and go for Flare. So, and then you could also, again, if you don't want to go for the headshots here, you could change that towards this. And then if you don't want to go, uh, well, this is still fine. You can still go and use that. But otherwise, you can go for any of those if you want to. But you see how, like, the build can evolve and you can change the build as you go. So, yeah, just a very typical standard build. Not much I was going to say there. A little bit of recoil as well. Do keep in mind, I basically have, like, maxed out recoil. So I shouldn't be missing. But if I do miss, it's lag. Anyways, gameplay on the screen. So, <laughs> as I said, if I'm, missing, if I'm missing shots here, it's purely the server. It's not me. Don't worry about me. I have a perfect aim. I promise. Now, as for the weapon itself, it's actually fantastic. Again, it's another weapon that I typically go and recommend. This week has definitely got quite a few good weapons for what it's worth, but the Sigurus uh, and Karnan is, is definitely a good one. I won't say, again, I know some people will be like, oh, what's the point of running this when dual toxis exists? No, I do get that, guys. But again, just for those who maybe don't have the dual toxis or whatever, then the Sigurus is quite an easy weapon to go and pick up early. And honestly, the Incarnate version of it is fantastic. So yes, I recommend it. Do go try it. Do go play around with it. It's an absolute we add clearer as well fantastic job that they've done with that so let's go ahead and continue to move on let's go and bring you guys back here yeah, what it do right <clears throat> up next we've got the sestra sorry i'm losing my voice a little bit here up next we've got the sestra so uh the sestra what does this do so the sestra is a <clears throat> it's kind of like a what, what is it it is a spool laser pistol so as you see if i like hold down you can see it spooling up and so forth and then it's a laser pistol so if i go ahead and aim for some headshots here there you go. I could then evolve it. And what actually happens is it's still a small laser pistol. However, if I now hold it, you can see it will get more and more critical chance the longer that I hold it. See how the colors are changing? Right, well, that is obviously important there. So as long as I'm holding down the trigger, it's going to end up getting more and more critical chance. And now we can go and see it's going in towards those reds there, is it? I think it is. There you go. So you can actually build up your critical chance by literally spraying and pet praying. As soon as it's then done and you want to go and rebuild it. <clears throat> excuse me. I'll go and show you this now. You can see that it's not. I have to rebuild it again by shooting. So that's basically how the session works there. 
So uh, over here, let's go and talk about the evolutions. Again, you guys understand number one, don't need to explain it much more. Evolution two that you can go and see here. So on shield, uh, shield or overguard break, you get increased critical damage for six seconds. Now that critical damage times three is really good, but it does require your shield or overguard to go and break, which means you really want to be playing. And if you wanted to steer in and get the most out of this, you need to be playing shield gate in with like catalyzing shields, or you would want overguard at the lowest rate and lowest threshold to try and get this as well. There might be some really niche setups with something like this in the future, but as of how it stands right now, it's uh, it's kind of, I say random when that's going to happen, as you could imagine. Sometimes enemies are going to miss you with bullets or hits, so it's kind of out of your control, but hey, it's there anyways. Now, this one here is with over uh, with uh, armor over 450. You go and get 80 multi shot. Now, the thing is with this one as well is that this requires Warframes that have armor over 450. So basically, when you look at both of these, there is niche as each other. But here's the thing. Most Warframes do have shields. So I go for the less niche one, if that makes sense. So I can try and work it with this rather than taking it with that because there's not that many Warframes that always have over 450 armor. But pretty much nearly every Warframe has a shield. So... You see what I'm saying? It's up to you. Take whatever you want to there. Or if you want to steer into it more, then take it for a specific loadout, you know? Um, anyways, up next, Evolution 3, your utilities. you got reload speed. It helps the transmutation. you got the uh, Slayer's Nerve on hit. You get accuracy and less weapon recoil for six seconds. Stacks 10 times. It's actually really good. So I do like that because, again, it's a bit of an inaccurate weapon. And then we also got projectile speed. Now, that's also good. Both of these help both of your forms. Take whatever one you want to, but these are the two that I personally recommend. And then finally over here, we got the last evolutions. We got critical chance. We got uh, the critical damage. Wait, why am I not running that? Should be running that. Uh, cri uh, base critical damage. Uh, or we got the increase of base status chance by 30 of current critical chance 40 as well. Now that could also be really good as you could imagine. But again, it will require you to continuously hold down your status. Uh, hold on your status hold down your uh, weapon i think that's actually the reason why i ended up going for this because i wanted to steer it into a critical weapon anyways um but yes if you're not if you're not always holding the weapon down then you're not always going to be getting the most out of it all right so it very much is like a once you've got it evolved spray and pray just keep going keep mowing uh, which is why sometimes you might not want higher fire rate on it i'm not gonna lie to you you can even take this or this i think i took this for a specific purpose but i've forgotten it now but i would recommend that if you are just holding the trigger down okay so remember that <laughs> remember that uh, we'll take this for the video purpose but i might end up switching back to that can't remember why there was a reason i did some testing but i can't remember what it was now anyways general general thing uh general uh, build right here so uh, as you can go and see again just very specifics we got the galvanized shot we got the galvanized diffusion you'll see a bit of a theme and a bit of a pattern here again scale and damage scale and multi-shot there's no reason not to take it we're going for steel path multi-shot fire rate lovely jubbly i would have put more fire rate onto it though because uh, expending all of those charges really quickly uh it might actually be a bit of a bad thing so if you do want to go and put things like gunslinger on here if you do want to go and put things like um what's the other one anemic agility or whatever if you have a ribbon for like fire rate you will blitz out bullets really really quickly now if you don't mind that because you're using it for like maybe a way to chunk down a boss it's not too bad but if you do mind that for ad clear, then you're not going to have the incard and charges for very long. Okay, just keep that in mind. From there onwards, it's criticals, it's viral, it's heat. Okay, now I do go and end this one in the Cascadia Flare. And overall, just the rampant damage that it does is very, very nice. So, gameplay up on the screen. So, yeah, as I, as I said there, um, yeah, the weapon itself is actually not that bad. But it's just whether or not you prefer to go ahead and hold down the trigger as long as possible. Or if you enjoy that kind of play style. It's kind of like a pump and dump, spray and pray, run and gun type thing. If you like that, you're good to go. If you don't like that, yeah, I could imagine in order to go and get the most out of it, it's kind of a little bit eh but it's entirely up to you i don't think that it's a bad weapon again it improves the weapon regardless so i'm glad that it's got an incarnate um but overall there's not much else going to say here it does do good damage as you can clearly see right let's go and bring me back uh, over here and we got one last weapon which is now the melee weapon of this week week eight is the okina okay let's go and put that off uh now we got the akina so akina you do need to go ahead and get yourself to evolution six when it comes to melee weapons so i'm just gonna go and pull these guys in real quick i'm just gonna keep hitting them so i go and get six so once you've got six evolutions um this is a uh, dual dagger i'm gonna have to do that again this is a dual dagger 
that's focused on slash okay so remember that it's dual daggers that are focused on slash so i'm now going to go evolve the weapon and when i do evolve it what i'm going to need to go and do now is actually lower these guys because i don't have a build on is um when you go ahead and get kills with uh with no build right now um you'll go ahead and get these um spectral daggers i'll see if i can do this quick run 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 there you go okay so i have to like really run away so you can see the dagger you see the dagger float around me there see that there you go you can see if i move my camera a bit better there so this dagger what it's going to do is that uh, again on every kill you end up getting more of these spectral daggers these are really good so what it's going to do is going to end up seeking out a target it's going to apply the max freeze on them and then it's also going to aoe onto any nearby enemies so if i stand here boom 10 stacks right there as you can go and see these guys also receive a stack for being nearby why is that good well first of all it's crowd control second of all it's a free cold proc which is going to be great for scaling builds and third of all uh, cold goes really well with critical so that also is something to go ahead and factor in so that's how that works let's go ahead and have a little look at the evolutions uh because this is where it changes a little bit here so evolution one time six evolve it off you go uh, over here we've then got the option between five additional combos on on targets affected by slash status which is good don't get me wrong nothing wrong with that build up your combo count i love lovely jubbly uh this one however though is on critical here you get status damage for 10 seconds stacks five times here's the thing the critical chance of this is really really high which means i don't if i didn't want to go critical or i didn't want to steer into critical any further it's crazy that even on a status build i saw i have so much uh critical from it really really good weapon right now so um the synergist seriously is kind of a lock-in uh status damage on top of it especially when i'm going to be doing a lot of statuses and when you think about things like slash uh we'll definitely take that okay now over here these are your obviously your quality of lives you got range you got combo timer pauses uh, when uh, when weapon is holstered and then you've also got movement speeds i won't lie to you for the most part it's going to even be the range just go ahead and help you a little bit further because then you can take range out your build if you want to or you can take the movement speeds this is similar to uh the prados in Carden, um with the parkour velocity okay so if you roll in your ship you roll quicker well this if you walk in your ship you automatically walk quicker um that's just you're getting 30 percent movement speeds okay so that's really good um and then we got this one over here as well we then got critical chance by six but like i said i think it's really good then we got the status chance by 12 but 25 percent status duration well as soon as you read that now there's two different builds that come to mind straight off of the top and we'll cover both of those then there's this one which is critical chance by two and then status by eight i won't even lie to you i just don't think that one's ever really worth taking even if you you either take this one or this one i just don't see why i'd ever really go for this one personally that's just my two cents survivor's edge um yeah take this one or this one but for now we're going to take this one so we're going status status remember that because let's go into the builds and what you will see here is i've got two builds for you guys and i will be showing gameplay of this first build so i'm going to show the second build first real quick this is your general slash builds this is for people who don't have an arcane called melee influence so if you don't have any arcanes here either don't worry about it the whole purpose of this build is to basically scale with slash that's what you're looking to do so condition overloads reach quickening faction status damage enhancement so the galvanized elementalist cr scaling critical chance scaling status chance so i can get more statuses off more often and then i go and take galvanized skill which uh, galvanized steel which is also an increase to the base status chance but funnily enough with the um critical damage there it actually yields a bigger return than things like organ uh, organ shatter so I actually get more critical damage from that than I would do here. Although I don't really care about the critical chance on top of it. It's nice going to have. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to take even more. Now, it really just depends if you crack a new critical tier. So sometimes you might just be better off with just this. Um, but it's entitled to you. I do want to make sure I guarantee you over critical tier one with this build because I want to be critting all of the time. And critical tier is going to help my critical damage. And critical damage is going to help my slash. This is a slash build. I will be running this with a primer. The odds are, I'll just show you really quickly. I can get my epitaph here. Here. the odds are i'll be running it with a build like this okay 
tap, 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 a couple times with this, then just nuke with the Akina. Okay, slice, 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 slice. Everything will die. Or I'll be running it with a primer, like my Dyriga Companion, um, that I don't know why I'm showing you these builds, but hey, you get these builds in this video as well. Or I'll be running it in a primer like this, uh, where I go and use the Manifold Bonds with the Arc Coil, and then I run more duplexes so I can go get more of these guys. And then I go and run an AoE uh, weapon, like the Hellstrom, and then I go and run primer in there as well. So you can even do it in, in any of those cases, it's up to you, but that's what I would be doing with the Akina. Now, I don't have gameplay footage for this one because it's a standard build. You don't need me to show you gameplay footage on this one. It melts, it melts still path. Trust me, validation, Just have a level of trust in me. However, the other one that I do want to go and show is the influence builds. Now, I don't typically, me personally, I haven't worked a lot with influence builds, but I have a rough idea what's kind of going on here. So this is what I've gone for. Now, influence is all about status. And the more status is basically the better because we want to go and get scaling off of it as well. So first things first on side this, uh, inside this one is to take melee influence. Status here on melee electric status, there's a 20% chance for all, uh, for, for, Sorry, there's a 20% chance for elemental melee status effects to apply to enemies within 20 meters for 18 seconds, but it cannot refresh whilst it's active, okay? Um, this is crazy, crazy, crazy goods. So now what I want to go and do is make sure when I hover over status here, I basically want to make sure that electric is number one. Make sure that that is as high as possible. Now, if I had a ribbon or something, I'd definitely be like trying to get it even higher um, if I possibly could. I'm not too sure if I can because I haven't looked at the dispositions. But yes, I'd basically be trying to make sure electric is higher. So that if that means you want two like uh, mods in here. So if I go and do... Uh, this 60 electric let's say hypothetically i wanted that unfortunately it will fuse it which is not good but let's say i wanted that um and i didn't want this let's say that i wanted whatever and then i ended it on electric if you want to bump electric up do try and bump it up have two of those to make sure electric is higher that's what i'm trying to go and show you here bad example but hopefully you understand what i'm saying just try and bump the overall see where it says electric there the 60 percent electric the 90 percent electric that higher is just going to help right don't need to go over overkill with it, but that higher will help. From there onwards, we got scaling damage. We got scaling status chance. Okay. Uh, then we got faction, depending on what faction you're going to be fighting, because there's a lot of elements here. It's going to be a lot of like dips and whatnot coming out as well. Uh, we do go and have things like status damage. So we will end up doing things like uh, I believe it goes over and some of it. So we got electric. We got um, we got gas going on there. We'll end up having slash uh, on the enemies that I'm also hitting as well. Just all of that fusing in and influence is going to be just spreading all of this over towards like other enemies as well so it's kind of like a wider primer but a primer that's also killing as well and that because like you're getting loads of elements on the enemies from a further distance and then those enemies are basically dying as well because there's just so much damage going on top of them so that's basically how that's working right there as well okay now you might go notice just real quick why do i have these lower again like in terms why are these mods not ranked out again my goal is to go ahead and just have extra elements but i don't need those elements to be as high as possible my goal is to make sure that electric has a higher percentage chance of procking that's what it is so whenever i'm doing whenever i do go and land a status uh, whenever it's so like 46.8 but again that's scaling uh, whenever i do go and land status i want electric to proc when electric procs everything else just burns okay so again up on the screen here you guys are gonna see some gameplay it's a uh, very interesting style is a very uh, approachable style as well it's definitely something that you guys want to go ahead and try out at any point uh, whenever you can but the akina no doubt um, I'm not the biggest melee enthusiast, although I have been using quite a few melee builds recently. I'm not the biggest melee enthusiast. Okina, I think, is the winner of this week. Um, that It's crazy how good that is for a, a melee influence uh, builds that you can go ahead and have things like the increased status chance evolution with, uh, with status duration and the, the increased status damage on the very first evolution as well. Stacking those up there is going to help a melee influence build and it's just going to melt through steel path. All right, you can pair that with a Warframe like Saren or someone else. And maybe if you wanted to, you could go and run it with a Volt with Shock Trooper or or even run like a Shock Trooper on someone else. Um, and yeah, you can get some really good like melee builds going off there as well. All right. Um, so overall, anyways, let's go and bring you guys just back real quick. Um, yes, as you can go and see, I think all of the weapons are good. My advice, uh, I would probably go in any of these three. I'd say Sycharis, in no particular order, Sycharis, Cybris, um, and Okina. 
okay really just depends keep in mind in kino is like a bit of a bigger investment but that's why i had to show you two builds because there's a general slash builds anyways i'm yapping all right hopefully i've gotten to the point right here a bit of a long video because there's a lot to go and cover but i think i turned all of the builds over and all of the leaves over on it as well okay excellent right i hope you guys enjoyed today's video thank you guys so much for watching as well if you do like it please go and leave a like as well um and uh, i'll see you guys in the next video thank you guys for being here bye guys bye bye